Jake, I found out something today about Chucky. We're on set filming Chucky. Here's an inside look at Chucky, episode seven. When Devin's mom dies, it's a huge turning point for the whole group because I feel like that's the thing that kind of discourages everyone. Now that so many people are dying and people who are really close to us, that kind of breaks up the yeah, whole group. Yeah, I think when that happens, I finally like, get the real thread of Chucky and I'm kind of like, oh, I really don't want to do this anymore. You want to get away from all of the horror and trauma you've gone through. Exactly. Nah, oh, poor guy. Oh. We're not good together. <sighs> the relationship between us when your mom dies, it's, it's kind of like we broke up. Uh, such a sad moment. It's almost like I'm, you know, I'm working with Jake, I'm being his friend and helping with this Chucky problem, but I think when that happens, I almost kind of blame him a little bit, and I think every time I look at him, I just can't think about anything else but my mom. You don't know how to cope in any other way. Exactly, and I just want to distance myself from everything. We can still do this. You were the last thing that Jake had. Yeah. You were the it, last hope that he had. Yeah, and it's almost like your family is not like breaking apart and it's kind of like, and like you don't want to see that happen. Ever since Jake's mom died, Jake's been in kind of a weird position where he doesn't really have a family. He doesn't fit in really anywhere. I realize you guys are my only family. Mm -hmm. Even though the band kind of broke up, I feel like they're the only ones I can trust now. And they're the only ones that would understand to make a final war effort. Jake and Lexi have a lot more in common than they thought. They both feel like they've been neglected from their family and they come together for a common goal. Chucky told me to kill mommy. Uh. When Lexi discovers that Chucky has been trying to use her little sister as an accomplice, it absolutely terrifies her. The fact alone that it's this person that she's always felt like she's needed to protect and it's the most important person to her in the world, even if she didn't always feel like it. I think it's also a sweet moment for Lexi because she's realizing how much she cares about her sister and how much she wants to save her and protect her and keep her away from all of this tragedy. It's locked, open it up. Andy makes a difficult decision to basically ditch Kyle. We explored in Cult of Chucky a bit how Andy really cannot have connections with people. And Kyle means everything to Andy. And I think that as he's heading back to Hackensack, New Jersey, which, side note, I'm from Hackensack, New Jersey, and I went to Hackensack High School. So besides the fact that all my earliest memories, like Andy, are also of Chucky, uh, there's an extra connection there. But I think he made the decision to ditch her because he knows what he's walking into could very possibly be the end of his life, and he might be very, very outmatched when he gets there. Uh, it makes it make no sense at all that you leave me behind. It does, because he'd rather lay down his own life than put you at risk. Typical dude. I think why Devin decides to go to Charles <laughs> Lee Ray's. He's never gone that right. That. He's, he's never gone Charles Lee that Ray's right. childhood like home. Times. Before that, he's looking at his pictures, and he sees his mom in one of the photos, and he kind of like... It's the last straw. Yeah, it's and good. then he kind of just like, you know what, I'll take this in my own hands, and I'll go there and do it myself. I guess there's a bit of revenge in it, and a bit of curiosity. <laughs> That's just my character. <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to see Chucky or nothing, but I see a lady tied up and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so then she starts like saying, help me. And then I go over and help her out, which was a big mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it was also really fun for me to play Chucky pretending to be Nika, because I've played Nika pretending to be Chucky. So this was like, <laughs> this was the flip of it. Just so I could play every iteration of, of the characters pretending to be the other characters. It was really fun. Also, he was very easy to manipulate. These kids these days, you know? Gullible. <laughs> Gullible. Hey. You just tease them, they're out. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. Chucky. Jake said the same thing. Teo, can you talk a little bit about what it's been like for you to play a character who has such a dramatic arc? Successful student and athlete, and he travels the road to becoming a complete emotional wreck who commits patricide. What was that like for you? It was really cool. It's like I got to play two characters in one season, especially since they're so completely different. One popular, cool, and then the other is just a complete wreck and a psychotic mess. Everything is definitely not going right in his life, so much so that he murders someone. You got guts, kid. I remember you know? talking to you early on about how when I first saw you and, oh, 
that's the guy. Because I thought that there's something about you that I felt like you can always see the wheels turning inside that I felt like this is the guy f to play the ticking bomb. Was yeah, like, you said that I hope to you me. took it as the compliment I, that I meant. I did take it as a compliment. That meant a lot because, you know, you're Don Mancini and he's <laughs> complimenting my work. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry for your loss. I don't really think she had a game plan. I think he thought maybe she could stir up a little trouble and then I think she saw his dad and she's like, I wanna kiss that and so she <laughs> did. I don't think she's a master criminal. I think Chucky's the master criminal. Don Mancini might disagree with me, but I think she kind of came up with that plan on the spur of the moment and then she kind of went over to the funeral to sort of fuck with you a little more, you know, and, you know, show off her famous Swedish meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring you something to help you through this difficult time. He is feeling lots of things. He's angry because he thinks his dad is cheating on, well, not cheating anymore. <laughs> he's with another woman already. He's furious at his dad. He's furious at this woman. But doesn't he kind of want to eat those meatballs? <laughs> those meatballs did smell and look delicious. What are you saying to me? That line that you say in the hallway, because I say, mom killed herself because of you, and then you say, she killed herself because she's a quitter. Just like you. Yeah, you yeah. had asked me to give you a, a longer beat after that one line when I stand up. And when I did, I saw the transition in your face go from should I, should I, to like you made a decision and now it was very, very cool to watch. Cool. Yeah. And then, of course, you. I bludgeoned you to death. You do me in. You do me in. <laughs> Was it fun to play that kind of rage? Yes. That he has? It was very fun. When I first went, that felt really, yeah. it Cathartic. felt really good. It felt, <laughs> I loved when you killed me. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. Of... <laughs> Wait a minute, how many dolls did you go through to like, beat him? Like a um, hundred for right. just this one little 15 second segment. Wow. Yeah. So, there's an angry Chucky, and there's a happy Chucky, and there's a Chucky with hands, and a Chucky without hands. There's a puppet Chucky, a Chucky that, you know, oh, wow. all these different Chucky's. Right, right, right. And did you know that your second death is an homage to the movie Magic from 1978? Anthony Hopkins plays a schizophrenic ventriloquist you know who's magic. other personality. Yeah. I've never seen it. And, oh, I, would, and really I totally would have watched Anyways, it. Anyways, he beats Burgess Meredith to death with, with the, the puppet. Doll. But they didn't do the shot that I added with the camera wow, attached. People walking down the street, falling line, just watching on feet. Teo, let's talk about the song We Got the Beat. Yeah. One of my favorite aspects of doing this whole show was how you guys all made significant contributions to your characters. So when we were having one of our early discussions, you were wondering, what is Junior's secret dream? And then I thought like, oh, what if he wanted to be a singer with the idea that he would pump himself up with that song? We got the beat. Your original suggestion that we use something to see a secret side of him. And then people saw in episode seven the climax of that. Ooh. Way to go, player. Chucky knows who he was always, and he wonders how come other people aren't like him, too. He loves stripping people down to their basic animal selves because that he can relate to. Now you're really being who you are. Thanks to you, the real fun can start. <laughs> Subscribe, damn it. I'll be back. I always come back and so should you, you moron. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,